week's live self-defense training video, you're going to discover the Joe or the medium size martial arts staff. We're gonna talk about using this or a walking stick. You can train with this, carry a walking stick or a hiking stick and they're interchangeable. Using a walking stick or hiking stick or your Joe for self-defense is this in episode number two of self-defense techniques with weapons. You're gonna start with a Joe in your right or left hand, it really doesn't matter. I want you to warm up like we do other weapons. You're just gonna hold the middle and you're gonna turn it from side to side. And the purpose of going side to side is just to get the blood flowing, start to fire the muscles in there. And you can see, unlike the bow, it's not as long. So this is a good weapon to practice with inside if you're stuck, shut down, quarantine number two, three, four, five, whatever it is. If you're not able to get outside of the house or if you have a small space to train in, or if you just love the idea of using a hiking stick or a walking stick to defend yourself, the Joe is gonna be your favorite weapon. It's one of my favorites too. Smack the bag, all right. So he's going back and forth 30 seconds, hand to hand, first, get the blood moving, lubricate the joint, stay safe from injury, and it's not gonna be as heavy as that longer bow or the longer martial arts staff. But this is a great weapon to use because it doubles as a hiking stick or a walking stick. Now I wanna get right into how you're gonna use this for self-defense. We're gonna go with a little bit of the spinning motions that we also use, spinning and striking with the, uh, the Joe. It's a little bit different than with that longer martial arts staff, but there's some crossovers, some similarities. The first thing I wanna show you before we get to anything else, martial arts self-defense principle number one is situational awareness. Paying attention to what's happening as it's happening and then number two getting right into self-defense techniques but first you have to get in a better position and that means putting the stick and this stick the wood doesn't bleed we say that every time the stick's not going to bleed it's not going to get hurt you're going to put this between you and the threat and let's call this the threat i'm going to make them a little taller so it's roughly my height that's why i like these floor bags so much this bag, the body opponent bag, or that bob, the one that looks like a guy, these are, uh, they're adjustable. They go up and down. They've got 275 pounds of weight in the base. So you have some nice resistance. You're getting some good strength training in there too. Good evening from Greece. So from here, just think about pointing your thumb at the threat like we normally do with a staff or a stick weapon. From here to here, I can lunge, I can strike, bring the backside through and then with this weapon especially I can strike with this turning motion but I want you to see from here just straight in coming from here straight in and if you think about this edge right here this ledge right the side of this hardwood staff going into the nose into between the eyes into the teeth knocking the teeth down breaking the teeth for self-defense the jaw the throat the solar plexus the groin from here, the most immediate, direct, and explosive strike you can make with this martial arts weapon, and hold on, I'm gonna lower you just a little bit. Realize it's too high. From here, just straight in. And so if you think about walking with your hiking stick, or in this case, the Joe, you can now immediately, as soon as you need to, maybe they produce a knife and you weren't expecting it, or the punch is coming, you weren't expecting it, and you have to respond immediately. The straight strike is always going to be the best. And the nice thing is, because you have a tight, firm grip with your hand, that's why you do this as a warm-up. But with this tight grip, you now have this heavy hardwood staff, which is a force multiplier. It's going to take all the strength of your body and multiply it and then concentrate it on that hardwood edge. And that, again, just goes straight in to their body. Now, the second thing that you can do from here is by popping it up into the backhand support both and now we call it a, a force multiplier you now have even more force from your body and you can lunge here so you have just that first strike and the second strike now the third thing that you can do from the same position and again this is that basic idea of immediate direct explosive i have to respond to the threat immediately i'm going to be Direct, that means go the shortest distance is the straight line, right? Shortest distance between two objects, me and the bad guy, is this straight line. That means this big winding hook punch. That might work 
coming up from the bottom, that'll work. Coming around from the side, that'll work. But the fastest, again, the knife comes out, there's no more discussion. There's no more question, there's no hesitation. You cannot afford to hesitate, just direct, explosive. And then when it comes in here to the backhand, your explosiveness is now greater. You now have from here to here, more power. And then I wanna talk about reach. Because if he has a knife, and let's say that knife is about this long, I didn't bring the knife with me today, but from here I can push the back hand. And I'm showing you kind of lightly, but from here, let's say the threat's away from me, I say stay back, I can then explode and step in. All of those three things are now happening at once. Immediate direct explosive, but also increasing your reach by pushing, kind of like you would hit a uh, pull, right? A pull cue, like you're playing pull. A little bit different, your hand might be like this, but you get the basic idea. So those three first. From here, I'm really close. I, I have no time to get out of the way, no time to think about it. I see the threat, it's too late. I know I've got to respond. I go straight in. Face, throat, right, for self-defense. Solar plexus, <laughs> knock their wind out, or even into the groin. Now, the second one, this is all for review, to the backhand, thrusting. Third one, increasing the distance. Pushing and thrusting at the same time. Now, after that, I want you to think about the spins. So we're gonna go back to the spins a little bit. I'm gonna give myself a little room. And again, this is the Joe, the medium-sized staff. Also, think about using this as a walking stick or using a walking stick or a hiking stick as a Joe for self-defense. I want you to put it in front of your body and then lift your pinky and bring that back side, the long side. So far, you've been using the short side. You're using the short side to strike. Now you're gonna to start to use the longer side coming down this way. So you're gonna push it over and bring it down. Push it over and bring it down. And then you can bring it back. And you're now gonna make a figure eight. If you have that long staff, if you know how to do this with the bow, or the jangbong, if you use the Korean style, or use the Chinese gun or the cudgel, that's just a basic figure eight. You're just carving that sideways with your hand. Now from here, it's different. You're not gonna hold it in the middle. You're gonna create leverage and you're going to pull it through. And you're gonna feel this immediately. This is going to put some stress on your shoulders, meaning it's gonna make them grow stronger, faster, healthier shoulders. And so you get the other hand up, and you're just coming around. You wanna to try to get that tight. You wanna always learn how to fight from behind your staff or fight from behind your stick, your walking stick. So the way this works on the target is this comes up and draws through. You're bringing it around and it strikes from here very quickly and it's unexpected. They might expect this, they might expect this, but when it comes from here, it's usually, and this is a principle from uh, martial arts fighting, kicking, especially Taekwondo, is there's always a side they see everything and they can block it in the blind side. They don't see as well. This is coming up most of the time from their blind side. So you're gonna put it from here, striking through and striking back. From here, down and back. And you can see they're very fast, very explosive, very quick, but not as controlled of a strike, right? You wanna bring it through, bring it through, all the way through. Watch it, it might, that last one almost popped back and got me, right? But from here, striking down, striking down. Now, you're not gonna get in this habit. You're not gonna be spinning in self-defense, asking them to come get it, right? Come, come in and come in. That's not what this is about. You practice this way, to build strength in the hands. And this is a very heavy Joe. This is that uh, inch and a quarter red oak, and it's about 50, I think it's 51 or 52 inches. It's in the link below. If you wanna see the link for that, get one of these bags to train with, that's in the link below. But the basic idea is you're using all of that power to strike. Then if you want, you can push it through, changing this hand position See how both of my knuckles are facing you, meaning the palms are facing the other way? From this position, I can come down, I can come through, I can bring it this way, I can bring it up under the groin, bring it this way, down, striking. And it all started in this position. 
From here, the way you do that is you push, and that spins it a little bit faster. And then this position is very powerful for you. This position, very powerful. And think about, for self-defense, how far the opponent is, especially if they have that knife. You want to create that distance. You want to keep them as far away from you as possible. So these are just the very basic moves with the walking stick self-defense or hiking stick, hiking staff, or in this case, that Joe. Now, I want to go back to the spins, and I want to show you how to go from this position here where the long side's coming out of the bottom of your hand or the pinky to changing this position so it's almost like a katana or a, um, a boken, the wooden version, the training sword. And from this position, it's extremely powerful, right? You can strike, and take their legs out. You can jab again, come down on top, come straight through the middle, come down at these angles, breaking the clavicle for self-defense. They're coming at you, they're trying to hit, stab, whatever it is. They've got a tool in their hand. They've got that skateboard. They've got the iced water bottle. They've got one of those uh, expandable police batons that they bought from Amazon and there's some kind of, they don't, they're not a policeman, they're not supposed to have it, but they're walking around menacing people and all you have is your walking stick, your hiking staff. From here, you thrust, you strike on top, you strike to the side, you strike to the other side. You have all these positions available to you right away. You can strike here, push it back, change hand positions. We talked about this, bringing it through here, up under the groin, up under the chin. But then we also have this hand positions, hand switch. I'm gonna show you how to do that hand change. So from here and how to get it back. You start from spinning, just side to side. Notice that my hand stays closed. You're not gonna get into this. Don't do this habit. That, that's just a little, that's too little on your staff for self-defense. I'm gonna just change hand position so you can see it better from this side. From here, when I come to the outside of my body, I'm going to pull the last three fingers back, slide them behind, and then the thumb and the finger hold it, and then I allow it to continue to spin, and I use that momentum from here, grab it with my thumb, pull the first finger out of the way, and then close the others, and now I'm in this longer striking position. I can now fight very effectively with one hand with this big, long chunk of wood for self-defense. To get back to the other position, I'm gonna show you a couple times so you see it. You're gonna drop it the same way. Last three fingers again out of the way. Use the momentum, continue it around. Grab with the thumb, first finger out of the way and you're back into this negative grip. So starting from here, good morning. We've got turkey, we've got grease. You guys are, are essentially neighbors. From here, Hopefully friendly neighbors. The history of Turkey and Greece, right? Thousands and thousands of years. Fingers together, the thumb in there. Same thing. We're all brothers and sisters in the martial arts. We all have the same passion, energy. And essentially around the world, we all have the same blood. We just have forgotten it sometimes. We let silly ideas get in the way. All right, anyway, last three fingers. First finger, close it. So from here, you're doing this spinning, right? And if you were a big Star Wars fan, you could start learning how to do your Obiani. And you start back here, you're spinning, and then you drop it, it comes up. This is a heavy one for that. Bring it around, bring it around. It's too much stuff in the way. All right, anyway, digre I digress. We'll get back on track. So we're spinning, it pops down. First two, the finger and the thumb, the first, last three fingers get out of the way. Continue the motion. Grab with the thumb, first finger. Anyway, practice that. And what that'll do is that'll give you a better grip. That'll give you better control over your thrusting, striking motions. Back to the very beginning, I'm here, he's coming in too fast, 
you're just going up from here, thrust straight in. The second one, from here, pop it up to the backhand by pointing the thumb at the threat. From here to here, and then push with both hands. Push them back. The third one, from here, point the thumb at the threat. I've got one on each side, and I'm going to push. This is uh, Jodo. Part, part of this you'll find in Aikido. Taekwondo has no weapons. We'll just throw that out there. Taekwondo itself is a new martial art based on a conglomeration or a mixing, a blending of older martial arts like, uh, uh, what do they call it? Kyukpa. No, that's, that's not it. That's um, uh, breaking, right? Uh, what do they call that? Uh, Taekyun. Taekyun, the kicking style. And then you had the influence of the uh, Shotokan, the Japanese karate. A lot of Koreans won't admit that because of uh, pride or whatever, whatever. I'm not Korean, I don't care. But the um, Taekwondo, especially the ones that were in the Olympics in 1988, the first style that was more like fighting, that was more aggressive, and now it's like foot fighting. And they don't have weapons. There are no weapons in Taekwondo. But in all of the traditions that came before Taekwondo and that blend into Taekwondo, there are a lot of weapons. And I have a passion for weapon. I do more than Taekwondo, so it comes from a lot of things. This style of self-defense is also mixed. Some of it is from Aikido. Some of it is from Jodo. It's the Kobudo style. And good. It's, you know, comes from karate. Karate is karate style, karate weapons, or Okinawan weapons. So from here you have this, you have this, and then you have from a farther distance, starting here, pushing. You have that. From this same position, coming down here, you have this strike. You can also push the hand, slide the hand. As you come through, sliding down, hitting much harder. You also have straight down on top, kind of like a, uh, like kindo or kin or um, the yaido style, the one, one draw and slice. So coming from the uh, Japanese sword, you can also switch hand positions like you would. This is very unique to, my staff is a little tacky, but this is very unique to the Joe. This medium-sized staff where you're sliding from one side to the other. And then you have all of these blocking moves, striking. But we're not getting on to all of that now. This is all about self-defense, practical self-defense against a knife, self-defense against uh, multiple attackers. Maybe someone's holding their, their hands on your body and then 20 people are uh, like they do sometimes, right? Greece and Turkey. You might know what I'm talking about, right? The, the community comes out to whip on you or a, a group of thugs or punks and you only have is your walking sticker, the hiking staff. From here, you strike this one, strike this one. Back here, there's one over here, up under the body, under the groin, right? Down to the ground, striking, changing hand positions. There's a lot of things you can do with a shorter staff, with this medium-sized staff. And that's what we're talking about. So it's more of a blended style, blended from many different styles because all I want to do, I don't care about technique, I want principle. Principles of self-defense, pay attention. Situation awareness, number two, get the stick between you and the threat. Especially if they have a knife, this doesn't bleed. Number three, ask yourself, breathe. What are the targets that you can remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe temporarily. Breathe, breathe permanently, dead for self-defense. <laughs> breathe, smashing the legs, their ability to chase, their ability to stab, breaking the arm. So you're, you're either going to remove or destroy the target. So that's the third principle. And then after that, techniques don't really matter. Whatever works. Whatever works is the best technique. From here, they're too close, just straight in, right? You can bring it around and hook them if you want. You can bring the backside through and strike this way. You can bring this in this hand position striking. Your hand could be in a different position. Striking, 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 right? Changing, striking. From here, you can bring it up this way. If it's in your backhand, you can bring it this way. Now you're walking here. He's too close. You can't, you can't do it with this hand, so you bring it to this hand. Now you've got this, this, this on top, up under the groin, right? Under the groin, through the side, changing to the other side down this way hand position. but if you if you train you have all of those techniques available to you 
Let me show you that last one one more time because I wanted to get that in this video. It's in the back hand, the threat's here. You're not gonna change hands. You're gonna immediately lift. From here, lift, thrust. Down on top, thrust. Right, thrust, strike, strike. All those techniques are correct. The point is that you move explosively, immediate, direct, explosive, basic principles of self-defense after situational awareness. Pay attention, pay attention to what's happening. Where's the threat? Think about it all the time, especially now. Breathing, stay centered, stay focused. Control your mind, control what you're thinking about all the time. Stay positive, but take action. When you have the knife comes out, Time grows. You don't do anything. You wait. You hesitate. Time builds the fear in your head. Action. Immediately. Action. Action destroys fear. From here, the knife. The knife. As soon as you see that, as soon as you see that knife, immediate response. I wouldn't say so. I, I think probably I know 10% or 1%. And then I just, but I just practice the same thing over and over again. So you get better at that 1%, get better at 10%. Don't try to know everything, just know a little, right? And then practice, practice, practice. The same thing is true if I don't have a stick. From here, knife, knife, right, knife, knife. If you're gonna get stabbed anyway, you have to respond. If you have your weapon, this is self-defense with weapons, episode number two. If you look at yesterday's episode, it was nunchucks, right? Uh, the next episode is going to be probably either the bow, the long staff, or my favorite right now, the walking cane, the self-defense cane. From here, action. But that's it. you got to take action. Let me know in the comments below what else you want to work on. I'll see you guys in a little bit.